absolutely on fire. First stretch there in the second half. Looking to light it up again. The header! Washington takes the lead! Hello, Kelly O'Hara! That was the game-winning goal for the Washington Spirit at last year's National Women's Soccer League Championship. Only on CBS Mornings, we are very excited to announce the new commissioner of the league. It is veteran professional sports executive Jessica Berman. She spent two and a half years as the deputy commissioner for the National Lacrosse League, and before that was a vice president at the NHL for 13 years. And Jessica joins us now for her very first interview as commissioner. Madam Commissioner, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Congratulations, Congratulations. on the job. <laughs> Thank you. This is something you and I could probably talk about for hours. Being the only woman in a sports-dominated sphere, it is different. But what does it mean now to be the head of a female sports league in, I guess, the idea that people always think sports men, sports mm. men? Well, I'm very aware of the fact that I don't look like the other people <laughs> who work in the sports industry. And if I ever forget that, I have my two boys who are <laughs> oh, 14 you. and 11 to remind me. <laughs> yeah. And actually, when I was offered the opportunity to be the deputy commissioner of the National Cross League, and I was the first female deputy commissioner of a men's sports league, I went to my family, my children, and I said, can we do this? Because I knew it was going to be a huge sacrifice. And it was actually my older son who said to me, you're a pioneer. You have to do this, it, Mom. It's how you change perception by making this the norm. The NWSL has had a problem in recent months with, with culture. Um, coaches uh, being fired, uh, allegations of abusive behavior. It's a cultural problem, potentially, that you need to fix. How do you mm. approach that? Well, first of all, the health and safety of our players is the utmost priority, both emotionally and physically. We're, I'm fortunate that I'm walking into a situation where over the last six months, things have really stabilized under the current leadership and with the board. And we're now working in conjunction with the Players Association and all the players to handle the investigation and make sure that we put forward the type of league that every player feels proud to play in. It does seem like this league has created this new wave of fans. And these women are household names. I mean, right up there with some of the most popular athletes in the world, you know, Megan Rapinoe, Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd. Um, how do you use the popularity of them and the players to create a, a more exciting league? Let's be honest, these women are icons, they not are. just yeah. female icons, they are icons. Exactly. And these athletes are worth watching. And I am so excited to celebrate them and make sure that everyone at home knows that they can watch us on CBS. <laughs> Our <laughs> nice season's plug. starting soon. Well you don't done. have to wait every four no, years. For we are well here. here. <laughs> we are here. And we share players with the women's national team. Right. So you can watch those same mm. players in our league. And I'm so excited to support them and celebrate their stories. Mm. Madam Commissioner, let me ask you about this recent pay settlement and what that means for the future of women's soccer. Well, as I just mentioned, we share players with the women's national team, and so we couldn't be happier that they were able to resolve their dispute with U.S. Soccer Federation. And it really paves the way for us to move forward because, of course, equal pay for equal work is something I think we all can subscribe to. In our league, we actually also just reached an agreement with our Players Association with a new collective bargaining agreement, mm -hmm. which really sets the standards for all of our teams to follow. My background is that I'm a labor lawyer, uh -huh. so I'm a mm. firm believer in the partnership that exists with our union. I like to say it's a marriage where you can't get a divorce. <laughs> right. We have to work together, <laughs> and that will be my priority moving forward. We don't have a lot of time, and this is probably not a fair question to ask in that, but I'll, I'll try. This idea, not just equal pay a, within a sport, but across the board with women and men's sports, they do have different audiences. They do have different TV deals and all of that. Do you think we're starting to edge closer where we do see those higher pay scales in some of the women's sports? It's happening. You're seeing it in soccer. You see it in tennis, right? I'm a huge yeah, fan of the U.S. Too. Open. Yep. And the female athletes that play in those sports are really starting to transcend the cultural narrative. That's right. And we, we have to also be aware that we are a business, right? Yeah. And so it has to be built sustainably. But I think certainly for these athletes in the NWSL, they have proven their worth That's right. and they deserve to be celebrated and acknowledged. Madam Commissioner, congratulations. Thank congratulations. you so much. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And, and we mentioned it CBS Sports is the home of the NWSL, the 2022 NWSL Challenge Cup 
kicks off Friday, March 18th. Oh my gosh, it's around the corner. <laughs> it's across CBS platforms, including CBS, CBS Sports Network, and Paramount Plus.